This is the last video in a two-part series aimed at providing guidance in creating a CFD-ready, viscous, multi-block structured mesh for a single passage of a high stagger angle axial rotor geometry. The pointwise file associated with this tutorial is the same file used in the first video. Therefore, it's advised that the first video be watched in order to complete the necessary steps to ready the grid for this tutorial. At this point, it is important to note that while these videos do provide step-by-step -step instructions, it's assumed that you have a basic knowledge of the pointwise workflow, having gone through the pointwise supply tutorials to gain familiarity with the tools that I'll be using. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to construct the topology of the grid and use pointwise's elliptic solver to smooth the resulting domains. I'll then finish up the tutorial with the construction of the volume grid. So let's get started. The first thing I'd like to do is bring up an image of the topology I'd like to use for this geometry. The choice in this topology was discussed in detail in part one and was described as being the appropriate choice for this high stagger angle axial rotor. In the next several steps I'm going to be constructing this topology. So this will refresh your memory and kind of give you a better idea as to why I'm splitting entities at specific locations, whether they be connectors, domains, or blocks. I'll then redimension the connectors such that opposing connectors contain the same number of points, a requirement for creating structured domains. So feel free to use the topology template that's been uploaded online as a guide in constructing and dimensioning the connectors. So the first thing I'll do is split the periodic domains and boundary layer block at the appropriate locations to define the topology for this grid. So I'll reorient the display, I'll just select the periodic surface domain, go to split up here in the toolbar. I'm going to split in the J direction at a J of 41. And you can see that I and J indices in the bottom right hand corner of the pointwise window. And I'll split it. You'll notice it's also been split on the periodic copy. So now I'll select the boundary layer block. I'm going to split it in several locations. So we'll go to split here in the toolbar. I'm going to split in the J direction as well. First split location will be at a J of 70, a J of 46, a J of 38, a J of 136, and a J of 96. Click OK. And now the domains and blocks have been split. Reorient the display. Next I'm going to create connectors across the inlet connecting the two periodic surfaces. and across the outlet. I'm going to use these connectors to actually kind of help me define the topology for this grid. You'll notice that these connectors aren't constrained to any database entity, so I'm going to select these connectors. I'm going to go to project up here in the toolbar. I'm going to make sure interior only is unchecked because I want to project all the points on these connectors. Just use a closest point projection and click the project button. And you notice now that these connectors are 100% database constrained, you can see them, they snapped to the hub and the shroud geometry. So I'll click OK. Now I'm going to split each of these four connectors using the nodes at the extent of the extrusion. So now I'll create the rest of the connectors used to define the topology that we discussed in the first video and early in, in this video. So I'll go click on two point connector and I'm going to start up here on the shroud and then work my way down to the hub creating these connectors. And you'll notice I'm, I'm just matching that, that same topology. You know, I split these domains and these blocks at, at these locations for a reason, so I had, could have nodes to create these connectors. And so now I've created the topology, defined the topology for the shroud. Uh, now I'm going to go down to the hub and do the same thing.
So now all the connectors have been created, and we can reorient the display. And now you can see the kind of the the crude outline of the the topology before all the grid lines are smoothed after we run the the domain solver and everything. So this is the original definition of our topology that we chose to use for this high stagger angle axial rotor. So now that the connectors have been created, I'm going to come through and redimension them so they have the appropriate number of points, and I can create structured domains. Uh, on the hub and the shroud geometry. Now, to create a structured domain, opposing connectors have to have the same number of grid points, so I'll keep that in mind. You can use the topology template that's been uploaded online as kind of a, a guide and mark it up with dimensions that you'd like to use, say, for instance, in the passage or, or near the tip region. So I'm going to go through and, and dimension these connectors uh, right now. So I'm going to select the connectors here at the leading edge, these connectors, and these connectors down here near the trailing edge. And I'm going to redimension all these to have 11 points. I'm going to come and do the, the passage. I'm going to select all these connectors here in the passage. And redimension them so they have 31 points. Uh, here near the leading edge, this connector has to have the same number of points as these two connectors do combined. So in this case, it's going to have 27 points. And you'll notice that when I'm doing this, I'm actually selecting both connectors, uh, one connector on the hub and one connector on the shroud. These connectors have to have the same number of points as the connectors here on the periodic domains do. So in this case, that's 41 points. And same with these connectors here on the back. These have to have 41 points as well. So now that all the connectors have the appropriate dimensions, I'm just going to select the connectors that I created. Now I'm going to go to project up here in the toolbar, and I'm going to project them onto the hub and the shroud. Okay, so now we're ready to create the domain. So I'm going to reorient the display and using an inclusive selection by holding down the shift key and drawing a box, a selection box, around the connectors I'd like to select, I'm actually able to select all the connectors within that box. So I'll do the same thing down here. And I'm going to click on Assemble Domains up here in the toolbar, and it'll automatically assemble the domains. And because it's an auto-assembly, sometimes it'll, it'll create domains that you don't necessarily need. Uh, so I'm just going to select the Domains mask and come in and delete some of these domains that uh, we don't need. And just to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm going to select all the domains and select hidden line as the view type. And it'll make, uh, make these domains just a little bit easier to see when we're running the solver. So there we have it. We have our, our structured domains on the hub and the shroud uh, and our, our rough idea of the topology we'd like to use. The next thing I'm going to do is change the spacings on these domains. So I'm going to select the spacings mask, come in here to the leading edge, and I'm going to select the spacing constraints around the leading edge, come back to the trailing edge and select these spacing constraints, and I'm going to change the spacing to 2e to the negative 4. And you'll notice it pulls these grid lines and points closer to the extent of this boundary layer. The idea is to match the cell heights on these adjacent domains. So now I'm going to select the spacing constraints here. And over here near the trailing edge. And I'm going to change these to 4e to the negative 4. Again, the whole idea of changing the spacings on these connectors is to better match the, the cell heights uh, of the adjacent domains. Next, I'm going to change the spacings here in the boundary layer to 1e e to the negative 3. I'm also going to change, you can see because I pulled the points closer to the leading edge and trailing edge, that the spacing near the inlet and the outlet is pretty large. So I'm going to change the spacings here on the inlets and the outlets to 2e to the negative 3. 
This will pull those grid lines closer to the inlet and outlet, better match the spacings over here on the, the periodic surfaces. Lastly, I'm going to change the spacing actually right up against the periodic surface to kind of uh, constrain uh, these, these grid lines uh, when I'm running the solver. And I'm going to change them to 1 e to the negative 3. So now all the spacings are set. I can select all the domains on the shroud and down on the hub and go to grid solve. We can go to the edge attributes and the first thing I'm going to change is the boundary control function. So there's two options. Steger Sorensen is a little bit more relaxed when it comes to spacing and orthogonality. Characteristics that more often than not result in a smooth grid after only a few iterations of the solver. Whereas von Levante Hilgenstock White more strictly enforces orthogonality near the boundaries, sometimes at the cost of grid quality and stability. So I'm going to select Steger Sorensen. I'm going to change the boundary conditions down here to type floating. And what this does is these connectors, these, these connectors that are internal to this grid and are shared by uh, two domains, are actually going to be allowed to float like internal grid lines. Whereas these connectors on the boundaries, like on the periodic boundary or on our inlets and outlets that are only shared by a single domain, are going to remain fixed. So now I'm going to go to the Solve tab and I'm going to run it for just 50 iterations. So now the reason for selecting all the domains initially to run them through the solver is so we can eliminate the sharp changes in the angle of the grid lines where two domains come together. This results in a much more fluid mesh that looks like a single domain rather than multiple domains. So now that that's finished, I'll just click OK, and you can see the, the resulting domains. There's a, there's a couple problem areas here that we can come in and fix. Uh, one is this pinching that's uh, occurring near the leading edge, and another is there's uh, a cell here with a pretty high interior angle and cells here with a pretty small minimum include angle. The way to fix this is we could just take this connector and make it more orthogonal to this boundary on the extent of this boundary layer extrusion. And it's pretty easy to do. I'll just select this connector, go to edit, smooth, and I'm just going to use a fit tolerance of 0.1 and click OK and then go to edit curve and I'm just going to use the control points and just pull this connector out a little bit to make it a little bit more orthogonal to that boundary and click OK. And you can see it greatly improved the cell quality in that region. I'm going to do the same thing down here as well. I'm going to go to Edit, Smooth. I'm going to use a fit tolerance of 0.1 just to reduce the number of control points on this connector. Go to Edit Curve and then pull these points out a little bit to make it more orthogonal. But I'm going to take it just a little bit further. I'm going to select these two domains. I'm going to go Grid, Solve, and then Edge Attributes. And I'm going to change the, the boundary control or the boundary conditions of these two boundaries on the outlet to type orthogonal. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow the points on these, these connectors to float. And it's going to make these grid lines that touch these, these connectors more orthogonal and it's going to improve the skewness on the interior of these domains. So I'm going to go to the Solve tab and just run it for 10 iterations. I'll click Run. And you can see that these grid points actually were pulled up along these connectors and the, the cells interior to this domain, the skewness really improved. So I'll click OK. Next I'm going to select the domains for these large passages. I'm going to go to Grid Solve the edge attributes and I really like how the the angle between adjacent domains is really consistent so I'm going to preserve that by changing the angle control to current grid going to solve and just running it for 10 iterations and you'll see that that kind of fanned out those grid lines a little bit and eliminated that pinching that was occurring here near the leading edge while preserving the angle of the grid lines between adjacent domains After running the elliptic solver, you'll notice the cells are more orthogonal and for the most part are even more flow aligned. Characteristics have been known to provide better convergence rates and more accurate CFD calculations. So the next step, 
I'm going to create four more connectors and they're all going to have the same attributes. So I'm going to set the attributes here in the default panel. They're all going to have a dimension of 61, a begin spacing of 1 e to the negative 4, and an end spacing of 1 e to the negative 4. So now I'll create the connectors across the inlet. and across the outlet. So now I have everything to create the volume blocks. So I'm going to select the connectors mask and the domains mask, reorient the display. I'm going to use the inclusive selection by holding down the shift key and drawing a selection box around these connectors and domains. I can click assemble blocks up here in the toolbar and you'll notice down here in the message window, one block was created. I'm going to do this for the rest of the blocks that I need to create. So now all the blocks were created. You see we have the blocks on the suction side of the blade and around on the pressure side of the blade. So now I'm going to select all the blocks and just go to examine. We're going to examine minimum included angle. I'm going to go to the cuts tab, enable cutting. I'm going to do a topological cut eye direction and just go to the view up here and uncheck show domain so it's a little bit easier to see just reorient the display. We can sweep this plane up through our block and, and kind of come in and examine where the problem areas are. Like for instance in this region, this is where the minimum include angle is occurring. And the reason for this is, and what we could do to fix it, is actually by making this connector, this other connector, more orthogonal to this boundary as well like we did uh, before for the other connector. So in this video I demonstrated the construction of the topology and the use of Pointwise's elliptic solver to smooth the resulting hub and shroud domains. I then constructed the blocks, completing the multi-block structure mesh, and finished up by examining the cell quality of the grid. With that, this concludes the meshing tutorial for a high stagger angle axial rotor geometry.